This is Fabio from the Unison team, and today I want to talk to you about the Unison cloud storage, and in particular, the B3 type. Now, if you go to our cloud website at unison.cloud, you can see the tagline for storage says access storage as easily as in memory data structures. Now, there are a few reasons why we say that. For one, storage infrastructure is just code, and not code in an arcane setup, but actual Unison code, just like the rest of your program. In this example, I'm creating a database, which is the unit of access control in the cloud storage, with a simple function call in the cloud ability. Then, the cloud storage lets you persist Unison data structures without any serialization boilerplate or mismatch between the data model in the database and the one in your program. The database schema is defined directly as Unison types. In this particular example, I'm declaring a table, which is a typed key value mapping, and fetching some data from there. What you're seeing is the complete code with no hidden boilerplate. Uh, having program types in your schema is just great, but it does require making a couple of adjustments to your mindset because those types cannot just be changed in code. They are now persistent and you have to migrate the data. Good news is that migrations are also just unison code. When it comes to manipulating persistent data, the cloud storage supports fully serializable transactions across multiple keys and multiple tables in a database. Transaction logic is expressed as an ordinary Unison function without a special query language. And you can easily tell that something is or isn't a transaction because transactions are marked by the transaction ability. And the Unison type system will also prevent you from introducing undesired effects inside transactions. You can only run transactional effects. And finally, Tables can be used to build rich custom data structures, like a cell, which is a simple mutable value, and the very useful structure we are focusing on today, the B3. So a B3 is a key value dictionary equipped with range query operations and great asymptotics performance. Multiple B3s can be maintained transactionally to model a variety of queries. And if you want some intuition, think database index. To create a B3, we can use the B3.named call which takes a database, a name for the B3, and an ordering function. The database is used mainly for access control, and it also functions as a scope. The name is scoped to a DB, and transactions span one DB. But do note that a DB can contain an arbitrary number of data structures, which will be transactional. The ordering function is used as part of the implementation, and it also defines the order of any range queries you might issue. Note that in many cases, including ones where you don't see an obvious ordering, you can just use universal.ordering as the ordering function. In the MyDeploy example we are seeing, um, you can see how to integrate a B3 with a service. I'm using a native Unison service here, which is a function from ID to user in the remote ability. Obviously, you can change the inputs and outputs. Any function that has the remote type will be a native Unison service. I'm creating the B3 in the deploy code, which is in the cloud ability, and then passing it to my service from there. Note that creating a B3 is item potent, so you can call B3.named every time you deploy without any worries. However, do recall that both the name and the types of the B3 now map to persistent storage, and you can't just change them carelessly, a data migration is needed. Okay, Let's have a quick look at the individual CRUD operations for a V3, which should be very unsurprising. They are basically the same as a map, uh, except they're in the remote ability. They are the most convenient for running a single operation, but they cannot be composed in a transaction. For that, we need the transactional operations. Um, they are all based on a consistent naming scheme, so their names will end in .tx, and note the type, which features transaction instead of remote. If you look at write.tx specifically, you might wonder why it requires random, uh, and this is an implementation detail which we'll see how to handle later. And remember, transactional code is just normal Unison code in the transaction ability. So how do we run these transactions? If we look at transact, it will obviously need a database to run a transaction against. Then it takes the transaction itself, which is just a thunk in the transaction and exception ability which, as we said, means that we can use arbitrary logic in our transactions expressed in normal Unison code. However, the type of transaction thunk also tells us another crucial detail. It only allows transaction and exception, and it's not possible to evaluate arbitrary remote effects inside it. That's because transactions are implemented with optimistic concurrency control and retried on conflict, and we don't want to retry an arbitrary effect in all deterministic amount of times. 
So if you do get an error of an expression require remote or another effect inside a transaction, you have to change your logic to move the non-transactional effects out. Now, it does make sense that we don't want to run arbitrary effects uh, inside a transaction, but if you recall, writing to a B-tree also requires a random effect. So what do we do? Uh, thankfully, the transact.random function can handle random as well. So if your transaction involves writes, use that. And as a final point, transact.random requires the state exception and random abilities. If you want, if you don't want to carry around such random effects, just call to remote to convert them all to remote. And we're seeing a basic example here, uh, which is how to how b tree write is implemented. Uh, it simply calls a transaction write uh, in a thunk and passes it to transact.random alongside the database that's inside the vtree. And finally converts all effects to remote. Now let's have a look at a more interesting example of using a transaction uh, to update two indexes. Here we have a vtree mapping user ID to users, called users, and another vtree that counts your occurrences of a given name. Uh, in this model, users have unique IDs, but have duplicated names. They might be you know, their first name or whatever. As you can see in logic, uh, the code is very straightforward. Uh, we don't have to worry about any complicated synchronization. It's just straight line code and it's going to be transactional. Uh, do know though that while transaction can operate on multiple values and multiple data structure, there is, they do have a limit on how many elements can be manipulated in a single transaction. And also all transactions have to run in the same database. Okay, so what we've seen so far uh, is the same as the basic table type in Unison storage. Uh, but as we alluded to in the beginning, what sets apart B trees from regular tables is their ability to perform range queries. The B tree docs I'll show at the end have the complete list, but here we're seeing a very common one, the range closed operation, which takes a lower and upper bound for a key and returns the key value pairs in that range uh, with start and end included. The result set of range closed and indeed of any range query uh, can contain an arbitrary number of values. And so the return type is a thunk in the stream ability so that you can perform streaming operations instead of having to have a ton of variants for pagination and whatnot. Uh, here we're just seeing a simple map to just get the value out of the key value pair, but please do explore the stream API for more. Uh, two operations that's worth calling out are to list uh, if you know that the result set fits in memory and you just want it as a list and on cons if you want to manually iterate over the results. And by default, range closed optimizes for latency by automatically fetching the values in parallel once it has established the key range. Another consequence of the fact that the result set can be unbounded in size is that this operation chooses not to draw results from a consistent snapshot because there is a limit to how many elements can be operated on in a single transaction. However, if you know that the range is small and you need a consistent query, there are transactional versions of range query operations whose names end in .tx. So in this case, it would be range closed .tx. So in the beginning, we said that the B tree is best thought of as a database index. And therefore, a common technique to be able to query along multiple axes is to build multiple B trees, which are updated transactionally. For example, given users with IDs and names, want to get a certain user by their ID, but also build a reverse index to be able to query all users with a given name. Names are unique though, so we cannot simply use them as the key for our reverse index or different users will override each other. The solution is to key the reverse index B tree with a tuple. The first component will be the name and the second component will be the ID, which makes the records unique. And you can see the straightforward transaction to achieve that in the example. However, we still have a problem because now we want to write a query to know all users with a given name, but those are spread across multiple keys. And moreover, to know the full key, we will need a user ID, which we don't have. So to solve this problem, the B tree offers the ability, the ability to run prefix queries. Here we've seen the two most common operations, range closed.prefix and range closed.prefix.dx. And let's have a look at the type of range closed.prefix to understand how to use it. Just like v3.rangeClose, um, it takes the upper and lower bound of the surge, but know that this time they don't have the same type as the keys of the v3. And this is because when the key is a tuple, you can specify the bounds in terms of the first component of the tuple, which will be the username in our example. You also have to pass an ordering function that can compare a prefix to the full tuple. 
But now that this ordering has to be consistent with the ordering passed on construction of the root tree. What this means in practice is that indeed you can only do prefix searches on the tuple rather than arbitrary tuple comparisons. So the order of elements in the tuple is important. We want to key our V3 over name and then ID and not ID and then name for this uh, query, obviously. Now, in the super common case in which we're using a tuple of two elements as your key, I want to do a prefix query on the first component using the universal ordering. You can use prefix ordering as the ordering function. So with this operation, doing our query to get all users with the given name is easy. We just call range closed or prefix, passing the same name as both the upper and lower bound. You can see it in the get users example. Of course, we can also run prefix range queries with different bounds. So in the second example, there were B3 or blog posts keyed by date and ID. I want to query all posts published in the three days before the given date, which once again is just a simple call to range closed or prefix uh, with you know the starting date as the start of the range and the end date the end of the range and finally there are cases where you legitimately have to iterate over the whole b3 for example to perform a migration and for those you can use two stream uh, all the same considerations of range close in terms of size and transactionality apply here and iteration is performed in the order defined by the ordering function passed by the constructor i hope you enjoyed this quick tour of bbc storage you can go to share and see the full docs for the V3 type. And for the state of the root tree. And remember, you can head over to unison.cloud to sign up for a free tier in a few clicks.